Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another UV mapping tutorial. This was highly recommended after I did my UV mapping tutorial on how to do a hand and an, and a forearm. So I felt it was a good opportunity to go ahead and show you guys how to UV map something that looks like this. This is a hard surface model, but it's also organic. It's not exactly uh, like a square, it has a lot of organic elements to it. And this is a great example on how to use several projections. So the projections that we are going to be covering is planar, cylindrical, and some animatic just for fun, just to show you how not to use it. And then I'll talk about the zero to one space and all that jazz. So let's go ahead and get started. And before I forget, uh, you can actually download this model at academicphoenixplus.com under downloads. You can download it for free so you can follow along. If you find UV mapping challenging, I highly recommend that you follow along with these videos so you can understand the theories and also implement them. All right. That being said, here is our stool. And over here to the right, we have a workspace. And let's go to UV editing. And I'm going to select it just to see what it looks like. Yikes. So this would be very challenging if I do say so myself. I, it would be impossible to texture this. I'm going to turn on this texture to see what it looks like, just so we can compare it to before and after. And yeah, I definitely think we can make, make it better. So next, let's break this down into pieces. So we'll start off with the top. Usually under UVs, we have a couple of options. We have automatic, cylindrical, planar, and spherical. Now, of course, we can always try the, what I call the dreaded automatic mapping. And don't get me wrong. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, automatic mapping does have its uh, its place, so it actually did a fairly good job in this one, but as you can see, there's a lot of little steps. And let's take a look at these, and some of them are not, actually not too bad, actually. Nice job. Okay, not, not so much of those. But so automatic can give you some results, but if you want complete control over it, you have to UV map it yourself. So automatic is an option, but the more organic the object is, the harder automatic is going to be um, be able to do it. So I'm going to show you how I would tackle this using multiple projections. So let's turn off this checker and let's take a look at our model. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate select by clicking on this button right up here. And don't worry, nothing get deleted. It's just isolate select. And the first thing I like to do is go to my four views. And the reason why I'm going to my four views is because I want to go to the front view. I'm going to go to faces and select the side view. That's probably the easiest thing to select right off the bat. And I'm going to take a look at this and double check to make sure I did grab some extra faces. So holding down control, I'm going to go click shift, double click, and it should deselect all the faces on that row. This is exactly what I want. I want the whole side of the model selected. And then I'm going to go to UV cylindrical mapping. This does look like a cylinder. It is a squash cylinder, but it does look like a cylinder. So that's the reason why I'm using this. This gives me a projection. And if I open up my attributes, you will see that the projection attributes are here as well. You can find them here. And what I'm going to do is turn on this grid so I can see what's going on with my projection and UVs. And you'll notice that these rectangles or what's supposed to be squares look like rectangles. So that means that my UVs are really stretched out. Another thing you'll notice is that the projection is actually halfway of the model. And the purpose for this is because Maya is giving you all the control that you want. So for example, do you have a boat? Well, then you don't need a full projection of a cylinder. You only need half. Do you have a cut watermelon? Well, then you only need half a projection. So again, it gives you the full control of how to project using cylindrical. So with that being said, let's grab that little tab here in the middle and just close it because our object is in fact a complete cylinder. And then we can either grab it here and drag it up. And you'll notice that my projection height is changing, right? So I can control it here. I'm more of a visual person, so I'm going to just use this model. And I'm going to keep going until it looks like squares. And you can see in the projection here, it's tiny. So I'm going to grab it and move it up. Oh, maybe I went too far. Yes, I did. Let's go ahead and crush it. And it's okay, guys. Everything can be fixed. That's the nice thing about 3D. Okay, going back to object mode. The next thing I'm going to show you guys is how to project using planar. So I'm right clicking on my UVs, going to faces, and this is the UV set that I just made. This is called a UV shell. I want to select the other two, the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is just click and drag and just select what's left. This will give me the top and bottom of my stool. 
Now I can go to UVs. I'm going to go to planar because they are planes and I'm going to go to my options. Now you have to figure out which one you want, X, Y, or Z. And there is something called the camera, which we will cover later. And I'm going to choose Y because I want the projection to go up and down. Make sure keep image with height ratio is active and then project. And you get these beautiful UVs. Move them to the side. Now they are overlapping. So if you click on this little button right here, you're going to notice that they are turning kind of like a purple, which means that they're overlapping. So double click on one of the faces and you can move it aside. Now this one is facing the wrong way because it's red. So let's double click and you can go to shift right click and then go to flip. Now again, don't forget, you also have your UV toolkit. So if you want to go the long way, you can always go to transform, scroll down and you can find flip. So I'm just going to show you the both methods. You've got the shift right click and then you also have the long way over here to the right. It really depends how comfortable you are with the button clicking and stuff like that. All right, so that being said, let's go ahead and do what's called an unfold just to make sure this is looking great. I mean, it looks better already than what we had earlier, but let's just make it even better. Double click on your faces and I'm going to go over here and click on unfold or you guys can double click, shift, right click, unfold, unfold. Double click again, shift, right click, unfold. And you might be asking me, why didn't you just grab everything and unfold it? And I could have, but I just wanted to show you the tool. So you'll notice that um, it got wiggly here and the UV still look great, but it's a little bit wiggly. Now, if you guys are okay with this, for example, I'm going to take this model and paint it in Substance Painter. I'm not really worried about the wiggliness because Substance will compensate for it. But if you guys are worried about it, you can in fact straighten it. So over here to the right under unfold, there is something called straighten UVs. And if you click on that, it will straighten it out for you. So if you want to bring it into Photoshop, you can now texture this using a straight piece of texture and you don't have to try to follow that curve. All right, that one's done. Awesome. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Let's talk about the leg. Okay, so this is the leg and this is with automatic mapping and I could go in and start stitching things together. So what I mean by that is that I can take this edge, double click all the way at the bottom if it lets me, doesn't let me. Um, shift, double click please, no? Okay, um, not sure why. There it goes, shift, double click. So what I can do is shift, right click, and then we can stitch together and then we can stitch, keep stitching together. But I am a type of person that We'll just like to make this as efficient as possible. So in object mode, go to UVs, cylindrical mapping, and same story. This is a cylinder. Let's go ahead and grab those little red tabs. You just click on it and drag it close. Again, it's not perfect. So we are going to have to stretch it out. Again, you're more than welcome to use the little manipulators to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like, or you can use this. It's really up to you. It's got multiple tools. Now let's talk about the bottom. The bottom is, uh, it's, it's actually there, physically there. So you can actually do a planar mapping if you like, but then you gotta ask yourself, like, is it really worth planar mapping this? Is anyone really going to see it? That's the question that you wanna ask your director slash supervisor. If this asset is going to be picked up and then the bottom of the stool is going to be shoved at the camera and people are gonna see it, Yes, you definitely want to UV map it. However, if no one's really going to see it, and it's just going to stand on the ground, then you really don't have to worry about it too much. So those are the type of things you need to talk to your director about. Another thing we want to talk about is your seam. You see this nice little white line right there? That line is telling you where the seam is located. So UVs are a 2D version of a 3D model, so you have to have some sort of edge. And this edge needs to be placed somewhere where you don't see it, or try not to see it as well, because when you try to texture something, it's going to cause some issues. So for example, um, no matter how great my UVs are, this line, this texture is not going to be seamless. It will do it the best that it can, but it's not going to be perfect. So what we need to do is try to hide it so that people don't see that seam. And there's a couple of ways I can do this. First of all, let's go ahead and grab some UVs. So sometimes I grab faces, sometimes I just grab UVs. It's really up to you. Let's shift right click unfold. And you can see that we get this really nice UV object. So much easier than 
trying to stitch everything together. Next, I'm going to place my seam somewhere where few people will see, which is probably on the inside part of the stool. So let me go to edges, double click on the model, and you can see this is the edge right here. And then I'm going to cut. So it's just like a piece of paper. You are cutting the paper all the way up so that you can split it and then tape it, which in this case is called stitch together on this side. So shift right click, you can cut or the long ways over here, you can go to cut. Now that they're separated, these pieces are separated. So I'm going to right click UVs and then I can just, you know, move them. Uh, the next thing I want to do is stitch them together. So this is the edge that I want to sew. So you can just kind of go down and you'll notice that the left side here is selected and so is the right side. That just means that they share an edge. So if you're, you know exactly where that edge is going to basically stitch together. So I'm going to go ahead and select my edges, missed one, and then click on stitch together, or you can always go to shift, right click, stitch together. Magic. All right, let's go ahead and grab UVs, shift, right click, unfold. Looks good. And if you want to, you can go to the details down here and just kind of stitch these guys together. So I stitch together, stitch together, maybe not those. I think I might leave them as is. So anytime I do a change, double click, unfold, because you never know, you might get another stitch together here, or so in this case. Which reminds me, the difference between stitch together and sew. Stitch together just means that if this UV set is separated, then I can stitch them together. Sewing is, if they're already attached, like a piece of paper that hasn't been cut all the way, um, you, you sew to sew them together. All right, I've got this little guy here set up. I'm gonna go ahead and take it and move it aside. Now, if you guys wanna practice more, I highly encourage you guys to keep trying to um, UV map these individually, but I'm also gonna show you a shortcut because it's really important to understand shortcuts so that you can work efficiently. So there is a way to transfer your UVs from one object to another. Now the trick is that the models have to be the same. So this model of this leg is in fact the same model just rotated. So keep that in mind that the model has to be the same, otherwise the UVs will not match. So to transfer the UVs from one object to another, you're going to select one and then shift select the other. I am going to go to trans, uh, mesh, transfer attributes, let's go to the options. I'm going to reset my settings to make sure they look exactly like yours. So edit reset settings. And the only thing you need to change is component. I know it says UV. You can just choose component. I can guarantee you that it will work. And there you go. I have one UV set here and there's the other one. Exactly the same and on top of one another too. Let's do that again. I'm going to select my original UV mapped. I'm going to shift select the one that's not UV mapped. And if you're clever, you're going to click on the letter G, which is your last command. But don't worry, you can always just go to Mesh, Transfer Attributes. I'm going to click on G, which is my last command, and there you go. Now, this is looking pretty good. If you guys wanted to move your seam, this would be an opportunity for you to do so. So if you're not happy with the seam, which I personally am not, I'm going to go ahead and change it. So let me delete the history of all these guys. So let me go ahead and delete the history by clicking on this button and freeze the transformations because they're still connected by UV mapping. So I'm going to grab this, move this aside just to show you. Here's the original. Here's this one. And I want the UV or the seam to be inside here. So edges, double click. Make sure that goes all the way to the bottom. Otherwise, it will not work. I'm going to shift click, shift click. That's the piece of paper, right? You got to make sure it's going to be ripping all the way across. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And then let's go ahead and cut. Grab these outer edges. Let's turn off this grid because it can be a little overwhelming. Trying just to select these edges here if it lets me. There we go. And then stitch together. As you see, I uh, missed a couple. No big deal. I can do so. Then select this one. I can click on the letter G. G, which is my last command, which is so. And then just kind of close these up a little bit. All right, let's see what that looks like. Right click UVs. Unfold. Ooh, the bottom can be, no one's going to see it, but still, I, I like to make sure my stuff actually looks good. Um, let's go to sew, sew, and let's again double click, unfold. That's definitely looking better. 
and the seam is in the back, which I really like. All right. So far we have our top of the stool. We also have the legs. Let's talk about these guys, the supports. All right, so it did its best to UV map. Not a fan of the way it looks. So what I'm going to show you guys is the same thing. We're going to be using cylindrical, but this one's just a little bit different. Let's go to UVs, cylindrical mapping. And once again, we are using a cylinder and we're going to close this. But then you're going to notice that it's not looking so hot. Um, and the reason why is because of the projection versus the model. The projection is going up and down. The model is going left to right. So we need to move the projection so that it rotates. So the projection matches the direction of the model. So to do that, I'm going to click on this little red T. Do you guys see that down here at the bottom corner of your projection, that little red T? You're going to click on that and that's going to give you the manipulator. The manipulator is going to give you the scale, the move or the translate, but there's this little blue circle around it. Click on that and that's going to give you the rotation. Now, don't forget, you also have the rotation angle here. So if I start rotating this, you're going to notice that the rotate X, Y, and Z, especially the Z, is moving. So you can kind of, if you need to be specific, you can actually type it in yourself. But I'm eyeballing it. So again, I'm trying to follow the projection or the direction of my model. So my projection is now facing this direction, but my model is going into this direction. So I'm going to rotate it like this. And then you're going to start seeing something interesting. The UVs are starting to look more rectangular and it's starting to look more like a square, which is basically what we're aiming for. So I'm kind of eyeballing it as I rotate it in multiple directions, trying to get it to look just right. It might take a little challenge. Don't forget there's also the, you know, different angles like Y, Z, like just make sure you kind of play around. And then you'll notice that I finally basically have a pretty good projection here. I'm going to take this one and just move it out of the way and then scale it. You'll notice that the seam is over here, which I'm not too happy with, but I'll fix that in a second. All right, let's get close. Press F to focus. Let's go to UVs, shift right click, unfold. That looks okay, but let's work on the seam. I want the seam to be inside. So I'm gonna double click. There you go, my edges. Again, check to make sure it goes all the way through because I know it doesn't sometimes. I think that's good. Shift right click, cut, grab these edges, double click. Whoops. Grab too many. Sometimes you just have to select them one at a time. You can also shift. Uh, don't worry if you accidentally select something inside here. They're already sewn together, so you don't have to worry. Shift right click. Stitch together. Oof. Double click on your UVs. Unfold. Looks great. Let's go ahead and grab some edges. Same story. If this gets on the way, just press the letter Q. That's just going to give you the select uh, manipulator. I'm going to select multiple edges, shift right click. Uh, so go down to the bottom. Now, to be fair, no one's really going to see these G letter G, but I still, you know, I take pride in my work. So I do make sure that everything looks good at the end. UVs, double click, shift right click. Uh, let's go ahead and unfold again. And there we go. Beautiful UVs. We haven't taken a look at the grid, but I already know that it's doing a pretty good job. Same thing here. All right, we have some UVs. These objects are all the same. So let's go ahead and transfer UVs. Select the object that's already UV mapped. Shift select the second object. And let's go to mesh transfer attribute. I haven't changed my options, so I know that they're gonna remain the same. So select your original, shift select that one. The third one, click on the letter G on your keyboard and voila, now they are all the UV mapped. Awesome. So we have everything except for those little nubs. Let's take a look at the little nub. I'm going to grab one. Now I'm going to show you planar mapping. Now this is really small, so we don't have to spend too much time making sure that it's perfect. So that's why I'm going to be using planar. Some people may be like, you should use spherical. Let's have a sphere. And you're right, but this is so tiny in the grand scheme of things that no one's really going to see it. So I'm just going to do planar. So the way it works is that I'm going to select this little nub and face it as best as I can. And then I'm going to go to UVs, planar map, planar, and then go to the options. And I'm going to choose camera project. So what it means is that it's going to project based on the camera. So let me show you what happens. If I go like this and I click on G, which is planar mapping camera, you can see that it just projects based on how you're facing it. 
So let me go ahead and project like so, just like everything else, double click. Uh, let's go ahead and unfold so it looks nice on all angles. And then let's move this aside. Now this one's gonna take a little bit of time because I am going to be transferring UVs, but there's a lot of them. So, you know, just, just bear with me as I select one, shift select on another one, and then go to mesh, transfer attributes. Select that one, move to this side, shift select that one, letter G. Deselect, select, G. Deselect, move over here, select, G. Deselect, select, G. And now when I select everything, everything is beautifully laid out. I am going to delete the history because every single step that I make when it comes to UV mapping will create history. And that means that all of our pieces are laid out. So again, select everything. Don't forget to delete the history. If Now that we have everything projected and it looks beautiful, it is time to UV layout. Now there's a couple of things we do wanna talk about and there's this little funny thing called texel density. So if you guys take a look at transform all the way down here, there's something called text texel density. And basically what it means is that, do you see how all, because I've scaled all of the UVs in different ways that the texture information is different depending on what it is. So for example, you can see that this area is really big, but over here is small and it's even smaller over here. That means that the texture information that you apply on this will also be very different. So texel density literally means can you match all of the grids to be the same so the texture information will be the same on all pieces? Now, in the past, back in the day, we had to manually do this. I had to grab every single one of these and try to get them to match. It was very complicated. So now we have a fancy little button called Textile Density. And usually what I say is, well, I'm going to make a 2048 map, which is a 2K map. And then I click on Get, and it kind of figures it out. And then you can choose, there's a couple of values in here. So you can choose 16 and then click set and it will change those values. And now you can see that the, the textile information and the UV shells and all the texture information basically match now, which is great. You can also see how tiny this little guy is over here. Okay, next, the layout. Now, the you always want to put everything into zero to one space. Now, Maya does provide a layout, so we can try it. So I'm always very hesitant about using this, but if you want to, you can go to arrange layout and then just click on layout, and it will actually force everything to go into the zero to one space, which is convenient. And it also keeps the, direct, the textile information, so that's even better. Now, it's up to you if you want to keep it this way. Uh, I personally want to maybe make a couple of changes because I find it very odd that it put the legs like so, but uh, I'm just gonna move this up. I'm gonna, actually, I think, well, let me just scale this down just a tiny little bit. Double click, double click. I'm gonna rotate these guys. And then comes the making sure that you take up as much UV space as possible. Now I know the textile information is really important, but you know what's also important? getting really nice textures. So I'm gonna increase the scale of these guys to make sure that they fit. And these, I'm not too worried about these little guys because no one's really gonna pay too much attention to them. So I can actually place them just about anywhere. And for me, I can probably do just a little bit better job by just kind of scaling these up a little bit and try to fit them in a, into the zero to one space. So the only issue that I have is this one, which is a little bit more challenging uh, because it's so long. So another thing that I could do is in fact cut it. So for example, I it will give me an extra line, which I'm not really excited about, but if I want to, I can just go ahead and cut it and then move it somewhere so I can get more space. Take these two, I'm gonna keep them even, scale them up. I can take these guys and just kind of move them. This is the bottom, this is the top. We probably will see the top more, so I'm gonna make the top a little bit bigger. And this one can probably be a little smaller. I can also rotate them. So, you know, there is a rotate. So feel free to grab some of these and rotate them. So there's a rotate right here. So I might go in and just kind of rotate these. Again, I'm just, t I'm just trying to put in as much information as I can into the zero to one space because this is texture information and texture information is valuable. I'm just gonna actually scoot these over. Let me just move this. 
Let me see if I can make this. So it's kind of like is it maybe Tetris. I don't know. <laughs> Tetris. So now I can bring this in and I can make it a little bit bigger. Now, another thing we haven't talked about is overlapping UVs. So overlapping UVs mean is like, do I want UVs to be overlapping together? So for example, is the top of this going to be the same as the bottom? If it is, then I could actually consider making this the same size, about the same size. So what happens to this top will affect the bottom as well. So it depends what type of textures do you want. But remember, let's say etch a name here with initials, then the bottom will have the same thing. And so you have to kind of consider, is that what I want? So um, just keep that in mind. All right, I'm just going to mess around a little bit more with this. I don't know if you guys need to see me just kind of playing around, but I'm just kind of, I actually enjoy UVs. I think it's very relaxing. Uh, let me grab all of these. I'm going to flip them 90 degrees. Just kind of place them in here if I can. I wish I had a song for you guys so I can just be like, oh, this is the song that I play when I UV map. I don't have one. All right, let me move this down here. And then I'm gonna scoot this in here. I'm gonna move these over here. And then I'm gonna scoot these over here and just double check to make sure that they're not overlapping and I think that looks pretty decent. All right, let's go to object mode, let's select everything. And just to show you, every single time you guys make a change in the UVs, it will give you history. So make sure that you select everything, delete it, and now it is ready to be textured. Again, we can take a look at the UVs. See how cool that looks? So much better than what we started with. We covered multiple types of projections and we learned how to do layouts, how to cut, how to create a seam where we wanted to. We also learned how to transfer UV. So, and the next step is going to be to bring this in into a 2D software application. So that could be Substance Painter, that can be Photoshop, that can be ZBrush. UVs are essential when it comes to creating really good quality textures. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. And if you guys want to see more UV mapping tutorials, please let me know by leaving a comment below. I would really appreciate what you guys think. If you feel that somebody could use this video to help them learn a little bit more about UV mapping, please share this video. It would be amazing if I could help somebody learn uh, how to UV map their objects. I know UV mapping can be very challenging. So if my videos can help, that would be incredible. Also take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free ebooks, free tutorials, and so much more. Please like and subscribe. Of course, hit the little bell. Um, that is your message to me saying that you like these videos and you want to see more. So please like, subscribe, and of course, share. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I really appreciate it. I know there's a lot of video tutorials out there, so I appreciate that you took the time with me. Keep creating, and I will see you next time.